chào quý khán thính giả Ven TV 55.2 Chúng tôi là tiến sĩ giáo khoa Đăng Nhân Trân Cảm ơn quý vị rất là rất là nhiều đã trở lại với chương trình của chúng tôi Đó là sức khỏe thường thức Và giống như mọi lần chúng tôi rất là hân hạnh là chúng tôi mời được hai vị guest à, Đây là hai vị guest mà chúng tôi rất là hân hạnh là chúng tôi mời Hôm nay sẽ nói về cái đề tài gọi là um, tax Free Tax Preparation à, Và cũng, cũng như là mọi lần mà chúng tôi chia sẻ rằng là đây là một cái đầu năm à, của 2013 Thì à, khi quý vị biết là à, khi mà 2013 thì chúng ta phải lo à, tìm những cái giấy tờ để mà chuẩn bị cho thuế, à, claim thuế à, của 2012 Và hôm nay chúng tôi rất là hân hạnh là chúng tôi có hai vị guest à, Đó là Mr. John uh, Zachariah and also um, Mr. Bart Hatfield à, Hai vị guest này là chuyên, uh, chuyên quan, chuyên môn à, về những cái tax preparation Và uh, sau đây thì Diana sẽ giới thiệu và Diana sẽ nói tiếng Anh à, Và Diana sẽ dịch là tiếng Việt cho quý vị Cảm ơn quý vị rất nhiều đã theo dõi chương trình của chúng tôi Đó là sức khỏe thân thức uh, well, we are so honored to have both of you here today. Uh, as you know, this is Van TV, Vietnamese American Network yes. Television. Uh, we have a really, really good, great, great group of audience um, in, uh, that are watching our shows. And, and of course, main, uh, our audience uh, uh, come from different backgrounds. We have lots of AARP members. Good. So we're so honored that you are here with us today. Uh, so Mr. John Zachariah and also Mr. Bart Hatfield, would you please introduce yourself and then also your background um, and okay. then what you do um, other than volunteer West Houston Medical Center. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I'm John Zachariah. We both, Bart and I, represent the uh, ARP Tax Aid Program. I'm a tax counselor and I also assist Bart with the training programs. And uh, my background is chemical engineering. I'm retired and I volunteer with, uh, with Diana uh, when I'm not doing taxes. Yeah, my name is Bart Hatfield. I, I work uh, as a counselor. We all work as a counselor, but I'm also uh, head up the training efforts, and I'm also Texas Three state coordinator. Uh, Texas Three runs from basically Galveston to Huntsville, and then from Orange out to Full Share. Mm. And uh, my background is also I was a chemical engineer before yeah, I retired. Both chemical engineers. Wow, this is so <laughs> interesting. So we have two chemical engineers and now tax expert. Yeah. Now, are we going to be putting our accountants out of work? <laughs> no, I think most accountants get tired of this, and so oh. they don't want to do it when they retire. <laughs> so they leave it to us engineers and other people. Oh my goodness! Well, we're so honored. Now this is you mentioned about the uh, Texas uh, Texas third, Texas three Texas three. Yes. What, what is that? Exactly. It's Texas is divided into four states because it's such a big state. Yes. And it's the greater Houston area, down to Galveston, out to Orange, uh -huh. to west of Richmond and north of Huntsville. So it's still a pretty big region. I see. I see. So the Texas three is is you are part of that. In right. The, in, in terms of this is for tax preparation. Right. Or Texas three did last year about twenty six thousand tax returns free for people. Oh my goodness. Uh, current year and. Then when you count the questions of the previous years and those things, we helped about 35,000 people. Oh, wow. That is incredible. That's a large amount of group. Well, thank you to both of you for all that you do uh, for to prepare taxes um, for so many of those that are in need. So tell us a little bit more about the tax aid program. What What is that exactly? <laughs> well, the ARP sponsors it. Oh, the ARP. Uh, the IRS provides us with uh, the technology, the programs, and the links, so that when we're finished with our uh, with our tax preparation, we e we e file, and our goal is to uh, maximize e filing and minimize paper returns, and um, we do a lot of Q and A services. Our clients are mostly um, elderly and low income people, and um, all of our all of our counselors are certified. Bart runs the training program, and whether you're a new volunteer or a or a uh, an experienced volunteer, you still have to go through the training program every year, and you have to take the test and you have to get certified. So every one of our counselors who prepares the returns are certified. And yeah, we are the largest uh, volunteer tax preparation in the country. We do about 50% of the volunteer work across the country helping over a million people nationwide. Yeah. And last year uh, in, in uh, district, uh, was this district 10? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did 27,000 e-files, uh, total to returns, 25,000 uh, e-files, 8,000 joint returns, and 2,000 
paper. So we try to minimize the paper. In the various sites around the city, we perform these services, and I've given you copies. And yes. Certainly, if you can make them available to the public, we'd appreciate it. Yes. And uh, we're always looking for volunteers, and we love bilingual volunteers. We're, we're, we've hit big need for bilingual. And of course, in used in the big uh, language areas are Spanish, Chinese, and Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's basically the program. Do you want to talk about the scope? Yeah, uh, we don't do all types of tax returns. We do the type of tax return that's most likely for the seniors and low income people. So if a person comes in who's a day trader, has a lot of tax shelters, we send them to a professional. Other type of returns like farm income, and uh, if you own a business with employees, we don't do you. We're primarily doing individuals, and those individuals are usually uh, folks with with low incomes or elderly. And we don't do pastors. And we don't do clergy. <laughs> <laughs> the clergy are very complicated. Oh, and wow! There's special rules for clergy, and we we generally run on a first come first serve. And often when we open the doors, we have a full crowd for the day. Wow. So tell me, um, in order for a, let's say we have someone watching our TV right now and said, gosh, I, I, I would love to, to learn and, and to be able uh, to have my uh, services uh, being uh, performed up to, yes. Uh, yeah. with, do they need to belong to the AARP no, they don't. in order to uh, receive no, they the don't. service? No, they uh, don't. Okay. We, you can go to the AARP.org website yes. and find a way to volunteer for yes. recruiting. Yes. It's too late for this year mm -hmm. because our training is finished and we're in the stages of testing. I see. And we start in the field around February the 1st. I see. We go from February the 1st to April the 15th or whatever time the tax year ends. I see. And we provide five days of training for folks. We provide all the books. Uh, our software is in the cloud so they can go home and practice at home on the problems we give them. So they have to do five days of training, they have to work four problems, four very difficult problems, and then they uh, have to pass tests. The new people pass four tests, some of us experienced people had to pass six tests. Wow, so this is when your engineering and mathematics skills you jump better. in. <laughs> but the, um, the testing for the, uh, especially the newcomers, it gives them an opportunity to get used to the software. Mm -hmm. yeah. I see. Because it's very different. I see, I see. <laughs> but we also want people with good interpersonal skills. Yes. Because a lot of people are very nervous when mm -hmm. they come to taxes, mm -hmm. and they're very nervous when they come to see us. And we try to get them at ease and communicate effectively because often they don't know what to bring or they're not sure. So we often have a person at our sites called a greeter or a client facilitator who tries to make sure that the people have the right information before they sit down and wait. I see. Hmm. So then if uh, a person that is watching, uh, is, uh, do, how, how do they make an appointment to come and uh, get their tax repair? Do they, uh, do they show, call? They, show they just show up, up yeah. with, with all the information at hand? Right. First come, first serve. First come, okay, I yeah. see. We generally don't have appointments because we work in libraries, and they, they generally operate on first come, first serve. I see. Uh, we can only do taxes where they'll, they'll give us the space free of charge. I see. And the Houston Public Libraries, the Fort Bend Public Libraries, yes. have been very generous in their space. Mm -hmm. And we go to some community centers, like the Balin Community Center, yes. and so forth. Mm. Yeah, I operate out of the Balin Center, and Bart does his training there, and Bart operates out of the A Leaf Library. I see. And what happens if uh, during the filing with, uh, let's say a year from now, and, and the IRS had questioned that particular, and they had audited um, the tax form, and said, gosh, you owed us an extra $500. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, now these are, are, are uh, non-speaking, or perhaps maybe very soft-spoken English uh, in, uh, insufficiency, uh, uh, the, uh, coming to you mm -hmm. as uh, they, they, all they see is a, a letter, the yeah. letter, IRS, yeah. mm -hmm. and then next thing they all see just $500 or $1,000, um, pay now. Right. What do they do? I mean, can they come back to, yes, they, to uh, you? Yes, they generally will or? contact ARP, okay. and who will send uh, 
that information to me, a state coordinator. I, see. I will look at the information and figure out where they did their taxes and get the right person to meet with them. I see. And we meet with them during the off season mm. and help them through that process. Oh, okay. We often find that uh, the IRS made an error in this letter and the tax return was actually correct. Mm. But we often find that people don't give us all the information. I'll give you a little embarrassing story. Of all the returns I did about a year ago, the only one that bounced back was the one I did for my daughter and son-in-law. <laughs> and when I, Whoa. she brought the letter to me and I looked at it and uh, sure enough, they had not given me all their W-2s. And so she said, well, what do I do? And I said, you've got to pay. <laughs> and that's where, the, that's where the problem usually arises. Because we do a quality review. In other words, we, one person just doesn't do the, the return. Another person checks it. So if a problem occurs and they get a letter from the IRS, they generally forgot to give us information. I see. Yeah. One in very, very, very interesting. Um, kính thưa quý vị, chúng tôi mới uh, biết uh, tìm, tìm um, hiểu biết đây. Uh, Mr. John Zachariah and also Mr. Ward Hatfield. Uh, hai ông ta là chuyên khoa uh, về hồi xưa là kỹ sư. Nhưng mà hiện nay thì ông, hai ông ta uh, chuyên, uh, chuyên khoa về uh, làm thuế. Mà đây là một cái, cái rất là đặc biệt. Chúng tôi biết rằng là khi mà quý vị đến uh, nơi, ví dụ như những cái uh, À, nhà sách như là library thì quý vị sẽ gặp à, những vị đây à, sẽ bận cái à, áo màu xanh và cũng có cái chữ là AARP Foundation and sẽ phải có cái bên tay trái thì sẽ có cái tên là AARP Tax Aid à, quý vị sẽ thấy như vậy thì à, khi mà quý vị đến à, những người à, như à, Mr. John Zachariah and also Mr. Um, Bart Hatfield làm là người ta sẽ um, prepare là người ta sẽ làm thuế cho mình mà miễn phí không có tính tiền gì hết à, đây là một cái, cái quyền lợi mà chúng tôi rất là cảm thấy là à, rất là hữu hiệu là tại sao là tại vì khi mà một vị đến á, à, những người mà AARP là chỉ giúp cho các vị mà cũng như là à, à, lớn tuổi các cụ ba à, các cụ ông mà cũng như ở nhà à, không có đủ tiền để mà à, làm thuế hay là có thể rằng là à, những người à, những người con mà thí dụ như đi làm mà không có đủ tiền á, à, thì có thể đi đến vào đi trong những cái nhà sách để mà à, làm thuế miễn phí không có tính tiền gì hết trơn thành ra chúng tôi thấy cái đi là một cái chương trình à, rất là hữu hiệu um, so then let's talk about a little bit more about translated that perfectly oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you I, I tried to summarize <laughs> So um, let's share a little bit more with our audience because um, I the other day was very interesting. I was uh, I love watching AM radio station uh, either 950, 748, mm -hmm. and 740 AM, and um, the discussion came about that uh, back in 19, uh, in 2012 there were so many changes to the tax code. Uh, I, I was informed that it was over a thousand plus of different changes. In fact, almost every day, it was hard for the accountants to keep up with what can be now tax deductible, what cannot, and all, all and it just became so complicated. Uh, so do, can you share with our audience any um, changes that will be applicable to those clients that you are assisting, especially the low income? Uh, any changes between 2012, 11, or 13? Okay. <laughs> Most of the changes that you're referring to won't impact people till they do their 2013 taxes. We didn't know what the 2012 tax law was mm -hmm. until January the 3rd, 2013. Made it interesting to teach it. Wow. <laughs> uh, but uh, 2012 tax law for low income and seniors is about the same as 2011. In 2013, there come significant changes, uh, mostly due to Obamacare. Uh, Obamacare uh, it affects the medical part of the tax return. Uh, in, in several ways. We don't know all of it yet, but I can give you a little brief of what we do know. Yes, please. Uh, most people take medical deductions off of the, when they itemize deductions. If they don't itemize deductions, then they can't take their medical bills off their taxes. There's a 7.5% exclusion. So if you had an adjusted gross income of, let's say, $100,000, $7,500 of medical expenses would not be deductible, only over $7,500. With Obamacare, that goes to 10%. So for that 100,000 person, you need 10,000 in medical expenses. 
Uh, so a lot of our younger clients really can't itemize because they're healthy. And that 7.5% exclusion uh, takes care of any possible deduction they have. Now that 10% exclusion does not apply in 2013 to people 65 and over. Uh, that's going to go stay under current law to 2017. We're always nervous about talking about 2013 tax law because Congress has a habit of changing it during the year. So the 7.5% is going to stay for the seven and a half percent in current law for somebody over 65 yeah. Yeah. will stay through 2017. Yeah. But who knows if that law will stay the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right next year, which is <coughs> next tax year, which is starting now, it's going to be harder to deduct medical expenses. So in other words, um, I'm sorry, because it's um, this yeah. is very new to me. Yeah. Um, this is so. In, in other words, if someone were to make a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, they need to be sick, you know, yes. or at least well, accumulate bills. or bills accumulate right. bills exceeding, exceeding ten thousand dollars in order to claim for. In order to have something to itemize. I right. see to be itemized. And it's not all doctor bills. Your insurance premiums can be deducted if you have long-term care mm -hmm. insurance. And so I know a lot of folks, a lot of their medical expenses are their insurance premiums. Right. And those are deductible even if you didn't get sick one day of the year. Mm. Uh, well, let's ask another question. What if our audience, you know, the group of audience that are going to the libraries yeah. and seeking free tax services, they're not in the $100,000 range. Right. right? They're in, the mark. They're, let's say, the average $20,000. Yes. Is there any help or relief for them? Okay. Only about 8% of our clients itemize deductions, in other words, take the medical. The low-income people get a lot of tax credits through what's called an earned income credit. Mm -hmm. The earned income credit is a concept that to encourage people to work, we will uh, give them additional money based on their earned income. And it rises, it reaches to a plateau, and then starts dropping down to eventually, if you make enough money, it goes to zero. And that earned income credit for a family of three children can be up to $6,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And those, those folks can also get additional child tax credits of 1000 each. So it isn't uncommon for a low-income family to leave our facility with like a $9,000 refund. Wow. On 20000 On 20000 And that's, that's why incredible. they have to come early yes. to get their taxes done. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's, that's not bad at all. That's very that's good. Not bad. That's yeah. not bad. And uh, next year, uh, Obamacare uh, adds a penalty if you're uninsured. Mm -hmm. and, but it also offers a tax credit for low-income people to help them buy insurance. We haven't seen the rules and regulations on this, but uh, this could be significant. We know the penalty will start at, at 285 mm. if you don't have health insurance. Wow. Very interesting. Um, well, let's, unfortunately, we are out of time for part one. Okay. Uh, so let's, um, I'm going to share a little bit more info here in, in Vietnamese when we come back for two part two. All right, thank you. Thank you. Kính thưa quý vị, sau khi uh, thông tin thương mại thì chúng tôi sẽ trở lại với chương trình và nói thêm về thuế, uh, về cuối năm uh, claim thuế cho quý vị. Cảm ơn quý vị rất nhiều.
So let's talk a little bit more about the changes. Uh, you mentioned about uh, earlier we talked about the the 10,000 uh, with the 100,000 the, the claim for that uh, but you also mentioned something about concierge yes can you share with us what what that means uh, for our audience well some doctors these days are reducing their practice to a handful I say a handful usually around 600 patients uh -huh. And in order to, for them to be able to accomplish that, they have to go to a, what is called concierge care, where those 600 patients agree to pay like $1,500, $1,600 every year to retain that doctor for their services. And so that's also goes into calculating the hurdle of the 10% or 7.5% in the case of the 65-year-olds. I see. Yeah. So, um, so in other words, the, the, um, so how would the patient, so then the physician would ask the patient about the concierge care, and if the it patient invites agrees, them. Invites, invites them, them to be part of it. And if they like their doctor well enough, they'll, uh -huh. they'll They're willing to pay, pay the it. extra money they'll pay to, it, keep, yes. to keep uh, having that relationship. And, they're, and theoretically, to get more service. I see. Rather than the doctor having to see 2,000 patients, right. he's only seeing 600 now. Wow. And uh, and uh, both uh, my wife and I participate in this. Oh, you do? And we do, in fact, get probably more care than we need. Really? <laughs> I now, think. How, how does that work when you said about concierge care? Because I'm and you more care than you need. I'm very interested. Because in that. Well, I'll tell you, it seems like every time we turn around, we're going to the, to the doctor for some tests. You know. I see, I see. So I, I realize we're old and it's, it's preventative and, mm -hmm. and I guess it's okay. But Yes, <laughs> yes. And of course, are you paying um, out of pocket for these tests? For the concierge. No, no, no. Medicare pays okay. most of it. You know, of we it do have an occasional uh, cost that is outside of Medicare that we have to pay out of pocket. I see. But and not a lot. Oh, I see. So then in order for you to be part of this program, concierge program, um, how, just give me an example of how much you have to pay in order. Well, we pay sixteen fifty each. Sixteen fifty. So thirty, three hundred. Thirty three per just year. Per year. Per year. To maintain our our relationship with our doctor, that we obviously like him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lucky doctor. <laughs> yeah. But he's not the only one that does that. There are many doctors that are going to that. Very interesting, very yes. interesting. There's an important side point off of that about tax deductions is you cannot take tax deductions for things that you were reimbursed for by insurance. Yes. It has to be money that was directly out of your pocket. So if you went to the hospital, for example, ran up a thousand dollar bill and Medicare paid 800, uh, the only tax deduction you'd have is 200. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can't double dip. You can't double dip. The government will, will track that. Well, the government will audit you. Will audit you. Yeah. Mm. And that's how they'll find it out. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's, that's very interesting. Um, so then tell us a little bit more about um, how do we reduce our tax? Because that's, I think that's, that's in nowadays, it's just, it seems, it's, and this is something that uh, we find it very um, interesting. Mm -hmm. that uh, in America there's just so much changes. In fact, again, this morning I was watching um, uh, a, a, a CNN clip, and uh, this particular person was sharing and said, gosh, you know, um, we had this lady. She came to get her car, um, changed the tubes, you know, the oil change. Yeah. She was driving a Lexus, brand new Lexus, and she was asking for a very inexpensive um, fluid for her car. Um, the mechanic person who was uh, who came out, he he said he was making roughly about seven fifty eight dollar an hour. Came out and explained to her and said, "Well, you know, it's, uh, your car's a Lexus. We have to change out. It's it's probably not going to cost you fourteen dollar ninety nine. Yeah. We have to buy more expensive oil. It it probably may be uh, costing up to maybe a little bit twenty five thirty dollar." Uh, and you, you need this, you need this, you need this. So the entire bill came out roughly to about $250. This lady whipped out her very nice purse. And in her purse had four of kind of, I guess what you say, the Texas Lone Star card. And it was worth $400. So somehow she had four cards 
and she's trying to use these cards mm -hmm. to pay mm -hmm. for her oil services. change and her services yeah. when in originally these cards are meant to feed the hunger oh yes, yes. So, so so as i was driving i was thinking my goodness this is and how this is this is some, this does not make sense because here it is the rest of us are asking to pay more taxes you know to require more taxes and here we have a, a group that are maybe perhaps abusing the system yeah. and she was actually willing and dealing with with uh, this person and she said I have four hundred dollar card and you can t and this is four hundred dollar but can you work with me where I can give you two hundred dollar out of this so in other words she was willing to take a loss. And I've never heard of that. I mean, you would always oh, yeah. imagine that these cards are to help for those are, that are in need. Um, but it was just very interesting. And, and I've had friends that said, gosh, you know, my taxes are already, I, I'm seeing my, my taxes. I, I can't deduct this and deduct that. So, so tell us about what can we do? Because we, as, as the rest of, of us who are working, or perhaps maybe those out there that are fraud? That, yes, yeah. <laughs> that are you know, making $6 an hour sure. standing in McDonald's, $7 yeah. an hour standing in McDonald's, and at the end of the week, you're, you're only earning maybe 350 right? Yeah. But then that 350 may be reduced down to $300. Well, the, the low-income people do? get the credits we talked about previously. Okay. But in the medical field, there are two major things that can help reduce your taxes. I see. One of them is called a flexible spending account. I see. And the other is called a health savings account. Mm -hmm. Uh, the flexible spending account is usually offered through your employer. Yes. And uh, you see it on the W-2 that the wages you received are higher than your taxable wages. Yes. And the person doesn't have to do anything on their tax return. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage is it's a use it or lose it. It's called a spending account. Mm -hmm. You have to spend it all by the end of the year or you lose that money. Right. Well, you've got to estimate what you think you're going to spend. Say you're planning on having an appendectomy or something. Right. Like here. And that's going to come out of your pocket, so you you have money deducted to pay for that. Yes. Now Obamacare has limited that to two thousand five hundred a year oh, for that type it. of account. That's mm -hmm. new next year. Yeah. The health savings account uh, is for a person who has what they call a high deductible health plan, uh, where you don't get co-pays for the visit to the doctors. You have quite a high deductible before it kicks in, uh, and that is taken off your income taxes, and we can do that for the person. And you don't have to use it or lose it because it's a savings account. So if you take, for example, $3,000 and contribute to that, then uh, your taxable income will go down by $3,000. But if you only have $2,000 in medical expenses, then you have no taxable uh, effect from that. You only get a taxable effect if you take that money out and don't spend it on qualified medical. If you went out and spent it for a vacation, mm -hmm. then you would generate additional income and a tax and a penalty and a penalty, oh, a penalty too. so wow. health wise that otherwise the IRA is a big thing that a lot of working people use mm. and that is the government gives you incentives to contribute to a retirement plan okay. and if you contribute two or three thousand to that that comes directly off your taxable income and all the earnings you make in that uh, stay tax-free until you take it out you also get a credit if you're a low income person on the back of the return and a credit is better than a deduction because it's a one for one reduction in your taxes. Uh, you also can get a retirement savings credit as well mm -hmm. and we do all of those type things at our sites. Well, I, I have to say I'm so impressed with both of you. <laughs> you both sound more more informed than, um, than accountants that I've met. In, in my entire life, so this is very, it, this is incredible to have, to have changed the profession from being engineers and now be professionals in, in tax aid. This is incredible. So um, you mentioned about IRA return and uh, savings. Okay. Is there anything else? Yeah, in the itemized deductions, uh, most people who own their home and have a mortgage and are paying property taxes mm -hmm. can probably itemize deductions, mm -hmm. uh, usually in the medical area. Mm -hmm this area and also sales tax. Mm -hmm. uh, you can deduct sales tax and all we, you don't need to keep all the receipts for that all year. There's a formula that the IRS allows for you. An important thing in getting any of these deductions is keeping the receipts. Mm -hmm. Another big one of course is gifts to charity. Mm -hmm. If you give to a church or the United Way or the Salvation Army, mm -hmm. whether you give cash or you give goods, you can also deduct that off your income tax. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to keep receipts. Yes. Uh, you, you need to back everything up from a receipt from the charity 
uh, or uh, your canceled check. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you go to the doctor, uh, you want to make sure you get a receipt for what you spend so you can keep that and keep track of it. You also want to keep track of your mileage. Mm -hmm. Your mileage uh, to and from your doctor or to and from your pharmacy really? mm -hmm. is deductible. Oh. Not at the business rate, right. but that. yes. At a lower so, rate, but it's. Yes, but yeah. something. Yes. It is something. And also mileage that you do charity. If you go volunteer somewhere for a charity, that is deductible. Wow, That's I didn't right. know that either. So you have to keep mileage oh. logs. So my mileage to the hospital, uh -huh. I keep a log of it. You keep a log of it. And if I can fortunately enough to itemize my deductions, I, those are in there. Oh my goodness. Can yeah. I hire both of you? <laughs> <laughs> you come to the library, you do this for free. Come to the land, come to the Wow. Happy to do your taxes. Because now I believe, because you mentioned earlier about bringing home nine, I mean, to be able to deduct the nine thousand dollars. That's a large amount. I, that is incredible. I didn't. Well, know Well, low that. income people. He's talking about the EIC. I, I'm and, talking about people who earn child tax credit less than twenty thousand of those. Kids, three kids. Three kids. Uh -huh. They can get a refund of eight thousand dollars thereabouts. You know. Yeah. Wow. Incredible. And uh, so then, that, so then, in other words, it's tax, uh, the sales tax, the uh, charities. I think isn't it true that when you give to charity, uh, it has to be a certain amount in order for, to be qualified. No, no. it has to be a certain. It has to be a qualified income. charity. Okay, but, but okay. any amount you give is, if you get over a certain amount, right. then you need a, a receipt directly from them. A canceled check won't do. It's right. usually over five hundred dollars you'll want to get at a one-time donation. Like if you go to church and give $100 every month, right. you don't have to have that special receipt because you didn't give over 100 at one time. And a lot of churches are giving you a, a summary at the end of the year anyway. You know? I see. And a lot of drugstores uh, will also give you a summary of all your purchases and so you'll have your bookkeeping done by them as oh. well too. Wow. Now, now I'm feeling a little bit nervous because I don't think I have all that receipt. <laughs> I mean, most people, it's just, you know, when, when we're a busy professional, we just don't I think know. of the, the, yeah. the, the, what you had talked about. And, or, um, and sometimes I think the audience may not be aware um, of these uh, tax deductions. Well, come and volunteer. You'll learn all of these. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. Now, you mentioned about the volunteers. Um, could it be like maybe a student that uh, yes. uh, want to be a future accountant we, or yes. interested have, in math? Would you accept them? We have a yes. wide range, range. We have college students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While most of them are retire retirees, mm -hmm. we have some people who, uh, uh, as John mentioned, uh, come for college mm -hmm. experience in their field, or they uh, credit in college. Or they're unemployed mm -hmm. for a year, and they'll work with us, and then next year they'll have a job, and they'll they'll go on. Very interesting. Uh, but we, have we, a, we have a young lady right now who's who's been a student for the last couple of years, who graduated last year, and she's a professional attorney and she's mm. working and she still comes back and helps us. Oh, yeah. how wonderful. We have some Saturday only volunteers mm -hmm. who uh, have full-time jobs mm -hmm. and come work with us. I see. And we, we kind of represent the, the full ethnicity of Houston. Yes. You know, we kind of look like Houston. Uh, <laughs> those of us who've been in the program for 10 or 15 years are, are mostly Anglos, mm -hmm. but, but as more and more professionals yes. come of age, mm. they joined our program. Mm. Well. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Oh, Pity. thank you very much. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Yes, thank you so much again, to, uh, Mr. John Zachariah, and then also Mr. Bart right. Hatfield. Uh, Our pleasure. Yes, hats, enjoyed it. My hat goes off to both of you for your volunteer work for the community. Um, you're, I think it's almost that like you're leaving a legacy. You we hope to. Don't you yeah. think so? We hope to. <laughs> Great. Uh, kính thưa quý vị, um, chúng tôi rất là hân hạnh là Mr. John Zachary and also Mr. Bart Hatfield uh, chia sẻ rằng um, khi mà quý vị cuối năm đã làm thuế là rất là quan trọng. Uh, quý vị nhớ là để dành những cái receipt uh, khi mà thí dụ như quý vị đi ăn uống hay là có thể là quý vị uh, làm việc mà volunteer, uh, quý vị uh, lái xe từ cái nơi này đến nơi kia, uh, những cái thuế, uh, những cái mà uh, tiền xăng đó mà quý vị đi làm việc uh, vô vi lợi đó thì có quý vị có thể trừ thuế được hay là thí dụ như hồi nãy à, ông ta chia sẻ là những cái uh, flexible uh, spending um, cái health spend account uh, also IRA hay là cái uh, uh, return savings um, also sales tax hay là những cái thí dụ như quý vị uh, cho tiền mà cho những cái uh, nơi uh, vô vi lợi những cái cơ quan uh, mà làm việc uh, vô vi lợi charity thì quý vị nhớ là để dành những cái thuế tại vì uh, khi mà chúng ta để dành những cái thuế uh, những cái receipt đó, đó thì quý vị có thể là trừ thuế được 
à, chúng tôi biết là um, sau khi mà cái Obamacare um, bắt đầu uh, của uh, năm nay thì những cái thuế nó, nó, nó thay đổi rất là rất là nhiều và cũng như là rất là khó khăn um, thành ra quý chúng tôi um, đề nghị là quý vị liên lạc chúng tôi sẽ đưa số điện thoại và uh, quý vị mời quý vị liên lạc ở những cái cơ quan đây hay là những cái library gần đây quý vị đến để mà quý vị làm thuế uh, miễn phí không có tính tiền gì hết trơn đây là cái cái uh, cơ hội rất là quan trọng um, once again thank you for being here. Our pleasure. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And um, you said that just right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, một lần nữa chúng tôi cảm ơn quý vị rất là rất là nhiều đã theo dõi chương trình của chúng tôi. Đó là sức khỏe thưởng thức. Thưa kính chào các khán giả. Ven TV 55.2.